Welcome to Altcoin Basics 101. My name is Chase and in this video, we're going to cover the altcoin ecosystem and that includes smart contracts, stable coins, and DeFi, also known as decentralized finance. And by the end of this video, you should have a good basic understanding of how this space works. So let's start with a very simple question. What is an altcoin? Well, an altcoin is any coin that is not Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was created and then after that, every cryptocurrency is an altcoin or an alternative cryptocurrency. And to get a good understanding of how these altcoins were born, let's go back to the very beginning. So Bitcoin was launched in 2009 and it was a digital money cryptocurrency that you can send and receive. And people were very impressed. Software developers, people in the computer science space, they, they never saw something like this before a currency or a digital currency that you cannot copy. Just like you might go on a simple laptop or computer and do copy paste, you could not do that with Bitcoin. And in addition, you can't just make it out of thin air. Just like you would go on a computer and do right click, create new folder, you could not do that with Bitcoin. But there was a problem. Although people were impressed with this, with this technology, they thought maybe Bitcoin is too slow. You can only send a, a transaction or a block is mined every 10 minutes. So let's take the same code or similar code because it's all open source. Everyone can see it. And let's make it a little better, a little faster. So the first altcoin that was ever created was Namecoin, which is not around anymore today, not popular. But shortly after, we had an explosion of other cryptocurrencies wanting to be similar to Bitcoin, but faster, a little better. And then we had the creation of Litecoin by Charlie Lee, which is very similar to Bitcoin, except it's a little bit faster. It's so similar that it's often referred to as the silver to Bitcoin's gold. And again, as people were creating new cryptocurrency, new ideas were coming and people said, why don't we make a cryptocurrency that you can send and receive, but it's private. So then we had the creation of Dash and Monero. And there was this whole mini ecosystem of all coins being born. But in 2015, a software developer by the name of Vitalik Buterin saw a problem with the way these cryptocurrencies were working. All they did was send money from A to B, send and receive. And you might be wondering, what's the problem? Isn't this what money is, send and receive? Well, not according to Vitalik Buterin. It wasn't part of, his in, part of his vision. Vitalik envisioned that if we're going to use a digital cryptocurrency on the internet, it should be smart, it should be programmable, it should be Turing complete, which is a term used in the computer science world named after the famous computer scientist, Alan Turing. So what does this mean, programmable? It means you can take the money and you can give it instructions. You can give it directions. So in 2015, the Ethereum blockchain was launched. And the way they would achieve these, these smart money where you can give commands and orders to money would be through the use of smart contracts. And you might have heard of this word before, smart contracts. And it sounds scary, but don't be scared. All it is is code. It's code with instructions. If this, then that. If this, then that, or if this doesn't happen, then do that. So all you would be doing with this code or these smart contracts is taking money and giving it directions. So I'm going to give you an example of how this would work. So with Bitcoin, for example, it's simple. You send from A to B, but with smart money, you can give it directions. Instead of just going from A to B, you can put it on a smart contract. Let's say you put in one Ethereum on a smart contract and you give it very specific directions. So I have one Ethereum on a smart contract and 37 days from now at 1 p.m. If the temperature is over 80 degrees Fahrenheit, send my Ethereum to person B. But if in 37 days at 1 p.m. the temperature is under 80 degrees Fahrenheit, send the money back to me. So you can come up with all of these different ideas and possibilities. So traditionally to do something like this, we would use a traditional contract with a third party and after something occurs, they would execute the, the, the agreement. But with a decentralized smart contract, we don't need that third party. The smart contract itself will execute the order. And another example I'll give you, and this is something that actually is, exists, is using a smart contract for sports betting. So traditionally, 
you would go to a company or a third party and they would hold the money and they would settle the bet after the sports game ends. But with a smart contract, you can make a bet between you and your friend. Let's say we have Mike and Joe and they want to bet on a basketball game. So they each send one Ethereum to the smart contract. So the directions in the smart contract state that on a certain date, go to website one and website two, so two sports websites, check the, pr check the score of a game. If both contracts say that team A beat team B, then Mike wins, send the money to Mike. But if both of these websites say that team B beat team A, then Joe wins and send the money to Joe. So out of these new altcoins, so we had ones used for just simple sending money, you send and receive. Now with Ethereum smart programmable, programmable money, now everyone wanted to jump into the space and we saw a huge, a huge growth in altcoins. There were hundreds, then thousands, and today in 2020, there's over 5,000. Everyone wanted to be like Bitcoin. Everyone wanted to be like Ethereum. And we had other platforms that were trying to build smart contracts emerge, such as EOS, such as Tezo, such as Tron, right? And this is the thing. You might be wondering, how are there so many cryptocurrencies? The reason is because they're not hard to create. Anybody can create them. Any software developer can make any cryptocurrency. They can give it any direction. They can make 10 trillion coins. But what makes a cryptocurrency or an altcoin valuable is if other people find it valuable. It has to have a very, a very, it has to have a use case. People need to actually want to use it. And it also, most importantly, it has to be secure. If you're using any sort of digital money or cryptocurrency and it's not secure, it's essentially worth worthless. So as these new altcoins were being created, there was another growth in another kind of altcoins, and these were known as stable coins. So these are cryptocurrencies that don't fluctuate like normal cryptocurrencies. You know, Ethereum or Bitcoin can go up 10%, 20%, all in one day, but these stable coins remain at $1, and they're backed one-to-one -one by the US dollar. And the most popular one is Tether. So Tether is supposedly backed by a US dollar. But the problem is Tether, although it's the most popular Tether, uh, popular stablecoin in 2020, no one is still certain 100% if Tether is actually backed by a dollar. They never had a true full audit. But in addition to this whole space of wanting a stablecoin that's not volatile, wouldn't we want something that's decentralized? I mean, we're working in a decentralized system of decentralized cryptocurrencies. How can we use a stablecoin that's centralized. So in eventually there was a decentralized stablecoin and it's called DAI. So instead of it being backed by a dollar, which is centralized, it's backed by something such as Ethereum, which is decentralized. And you might be wondering, but if Ethereum, although it's decentralized, it's very volatile, how will this stablecoin die? How will it remain stable? And the way this works, it's a bit complex. So I'm just gonna go over it briefly but we will go over it in future videos because like I said, it's a little difficult to understand, but the DAI stablecoin stays stable because people that hold another token called Maker have voting rights and they have an incentive to keep the price at $1. If it drops to 98 cents or it goes to $1.05, the holders of this token have an incentive to keep it stable and that's how it remains stable. So as you can see, this whole ecosystem is growing and we have stable coins, we have smart contracts, we have all of these cryptocurrencies for very specific use cases, but we can't put it to waste. We have all of this valuable technology, valuable information. So what are we going to do with it? This was the thought in the, in the altcoin ecosystem. So, it, so over time, as things developed, we finally reached a point where DeFi or decentralized finance was maybe one of the most important use cases for smart contracts, especially Ethereum. This is taking traditional financial applications and just making them decentralized. You're just removing the third party, removing the company. These are industries such as payments, stable, uh, well not stable coins, insurance, derivatives, investing, marketplaces, credit and lending. So in today, May of 2020, the most popular use case for DeFi is credit and lending. And I'm on this website here, DeFiPulse.com, 
and it shows the total value of money locked into these DeFi smart contracts. And at the recording of this video, it's $847 million. And we can scroll down the list and look at these projects and you might notice something. Most of them run on the Ethereum blockchain. And this is because this is what developers are choosing to use. They don't have to use Ethereum. There are other ecosystems they can use EOS or, or Tron or NEO, but they chose Ethereum. And another thing about these is these aren't standalone projects. It's not like one company works on its own and the other works on its own. It's almost like Lego pieces where you can take a protocol here and a protocol there and you can build them together and you can make a new protocol. And I'm gonna show you a real example. Again, I know this might be a little complicated, but this is just the introduction and we'll go over a little more in future videos. So I have this application on the screen in front of me. It's called Pool Together. And this is a lottery where no one loses, you can only win. And the way this works is people pull their money into one of these smart contracts. The smart contract earns interest and the interest goes to a winner and everyone gets back their money. So this works with different pieces. As I mentioned before, there's many protocols for this to work. So Pool Together uses Compound, which is a protocol to generate the interest, and Compound uses MakerDAO and DAI, the stable coin that we talked about. And then also you need to integrate the user experience and have someone pay for this using cryptocurrency in a wallet. And I even have, in the, I even have the wallet, for example, ex um, installed on my screen here. It's called the MetaMask wallet. So if I want to use this pool together app, I can connect this wallet and interact. But again, there's other wallets we can use. Like it's, it's like a Lego, it's Lego pieces. You can build new things with DeFi and it's only the beginning. This space has the potential to revolutionize the way we live and the way that we do business. So hopefully by now at the end of this video, you have a pretty good understanding of how the altcoin ecosystem works. But if you don't, don't worry because we will go deeper in future videos. Thank you for listening.